Good morning. Good morning. And welcome, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I see lots of green. But I was told to wear green, so I did. Um, announcements for today. Tuesday, we have our community dinner. It's spaghetti again. Oh, yeah. I mean, not that we have spaghetti all the time, but it's spaghetti again. And it's good spaghetti. I cook it, so... I, don't, I cook the noodles. I don't do the sauce. So the noodles will be great. I don't know about the sauce. But <laughs> so come on out and, and enjoy the dinner. Um, and we're going to try Bible study and choir again on Wednesday. We'll see how that goes. Um, let's see. There's a, and this is not an April Fool's joke. There's a building and grounds committee meeting April 1st, 630 here at the church. We're still in March Madness. Uh, don't forget to pick up the, the uh, balls for the OTC. We have 97 right now. So we have that. Also have an extraordinary women's conference that's in Lynchburg. It's at Thomas Rhodes Baptist Church. Uh, this is the sister conference to the Men's Impact Weekend that I just went to last weekend. Um, if the women's is um, you're going to be uplifted is awesome um they have speakers uh they have a comedian um we had shane a call from shane and shane if you know who shane and shane are a christian music group um there's another one in texas that has big daddy weave if you follow that so um i will tell you um for me uh there's 1500 2000 men and when they start singing the worship music it, it gives you chill bumps so, uh, ladies, this is, uh, is going to be on a bulletin board somewhere. The March gladness deadline is the end of the month. Um, the prices may go up a little bit by then, but uh, the basic is you sit anywhere you want to. The gold is there's a section in the middle. That's the only difference. So if you want to go to that, we will make sure that gets put on a bulletin board. Any other announcements that we need to Yes? Sure. I just want to say two things. One, there's a sign-up sheet going around <laughs> with uh, uh, all of the different functions that David, Stacy, and Abigail have been fulfilling, and I've shown it to a bunch of you. Thank you if you've already signed up. Uh, it, if you haven't seen it yet, it is out and about, um, and uh, there are a number of people who've signed up for functions there. We welcome having multiple people on each of those. So if you see somebody's name there uh, and you wanted to do some, please put your name on there as well because they, we will need to have multiple people doing those. That's one. The second announcement that I have is that there is going to be a farewell party for the Vogels next Sunday at the Driggs House right after our church service. Um, the choir is hosting this farewell get-together. Everyone in the church is invited, um, but Hilda needs a head count. So if you will please see Hilda um, or text her, call her, and let her know that you're going to be there next Sunday after church uh, to, for the Vogel's farewell. And I need to say that that is, what, that's the 24th. They will be here one more week, but the party is next. Right. We want, didn't want to try to do that on Easter Sunday because of all the other festivities and anything anybody else might be doing. And so, uh, did I get everything on there, Hilda, that you wanted me to say? That's it. Everyone's invited. Choir's hosting. Please come, but let her, let her know in advance. David, thank you. All right. And now we're going to sing number 12. Okay. And our call to worship. Oh, no. Call to worship. Okay. Sorry. Is next. All right. If you'll open your bulletins to the call to worship. Got me out of order there. Praise the Lord. For God is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. God gathers the outcasts of Israel. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving for. And our first song is Great is the Lord. If you'll stand and sing, please.
be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Beulah Baptist Church on the day after St. Patrick's Day. I'm so glad each and every one of you are here. If you're out there on the web, on whether it's Facebook or YouTube or whatever that other stuff I know nothing about, we welcome you. We're glad you're with us. Uh, this morning, I want to I want to describe someone to you, and I want to see if you can guess who I'm talking about. Uh, this person, if you ask them, where are you from, they may not know what to sell you, tell you. This person probably has a passport, but no driver's license. Uh, let's see, this person has never been to a Little League game or a school dance or a football game, this person at Christmas, their grandmother sends them peanut butter and toothpaste. Uh, this person can probably speak three, two or three languages, but can't spell anything in any of them. Uh, see, this person, uh, if, it was, if they were writing their life story, some paragraphs would start when I was. So who am I talking about? Children. Uh, if you if you stop and think about it, and the reason I brought this up, St. Patrick was a missionary to Ireland, to the Emerald Isle. I don't know whether he got rid of the snakes or not, the serpents, but uh, he probably did. I don't. Know, he probably drank beer, but not green beer. But and. He didn't eat corned beef and cabbage, but he was a missionary. Think about these families, what they go through, these, these young children. That, if you look on the back of the bulletin, there is a missionary family that Beulah Baptist Church sponsors. We don't sponsor them with money. We sponsor them with prayer. So I'd like for you to remember these people and, and remember and pray. Just think about what they have sacrificed, what their family, this couple here, their children are grown and actually live in Richmond, but they grew up in the mission field. And think what, what they went through, and what they did without to, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Great Commission. So pray for them, if you would, this week and, and every week. Thank you. <clears throat> now, please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, and good morning, Lord. We're just so happy that you're here with us this morning. And Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, both those sins that we committed and the things that we omitted when we should have done them. Lord, I ask you to be with each and every one here this morning, be with those traveling, be with those that are sick, be with our pastor this morning, and Lord, we just thank you for your love and your grace and your forgiveness. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to sing. Are you washed? Are you washed? Please stand. <laughs>
we're coming to our prayer time today, as you can see, and I have a number of requests I already know about, and I will read those, and then I'll ask you for yours. Um, I'd like us to remember May. Um, May is not feeling well, and I wish she were feeling better and be able to be here, but um, we miss her when she's not here, but if you'd pray for May, I would appreciate that, and I'm sure she would. This week, Sarah is uh, in Roanoke visiting her brothers, family, extended family, and she's been texting me about that and what's going well and what's concerning to her, and um, I, I'd like to ask that you pray for Sarah and her family. Um, I'd like to ask that you pray for Charlotte and Eddie. We pray for them on a regular basis. I did go see Charlotte this week. I took her some clothes that some folks had purchased. Asked for to help improve her life um, at Carrington Place. It's Carrington Place, right? Carrington Place. Um, and um, so, um, Eddie, if you're watching, I'm sorry I didn't tell you I went to see Charlotte, but I went to see her without you. Um, sometimes I, Eddie and I take him over there, and sometimes we meet over there, and sometimes I just go visit with her briefly by myself, and so I did that. And Eddie, I hope you're out there doing well too, for Eddie as well. If you've not called Eddie, before, about that, but just call him if you haven't. Um, pray for Patsy Batten and Carter. Members of this congregation, Patsy Watkins says, he says, Watkins are If you'll pray for them, I would appreciate it. Um, you will. I'm pressing well. He's had some heart issues this, over the last week or 10 days or so that have been fairly serious. He's been in the hospital. I believe, is he still home? Came home yesterday, but I know Beth would appreciate your praying for her brother, and I'm sure he would appreciate you praying. Um, uh, and what's his first name? Tim. Tim? Let's pray for Tim uh, Fields. Thank you for that. Um, uh, David asked us to pray for our missionaries. Their names are Philip and Kimberly Kane. We pray for them sometimes regularly, sometimes periodically, but I appreciated his word this morning. And so if you haven't, their names are on the back of the bulletin, and if you haven't already written them down, they're written right there for you. But if you'll pray for Philip and Kimberly Kane. Um, there also is at least one unspoken request in the congregation this morning that I know of. Is there anything else any of you uh, would like to add to this list? And I'm sure you do. Yes, ma'am. Indeed. So let's pray for all of the men and women in our military, um, those who are deployed, those who are about to be deployed. We want to pray for all of those folks for God's safety in every respect. Other requests? Let's pray for world peace. Thank you, Doretha. Others. Mary. Okay. So asking for prayer down the road uh, her daughter that's the good news the bad news is she's been hospitalized um, and so by all means others how about praises My goodness. Happy, happy 25th Beulah anniversary. Amen. I'm glad y'all are here. Amen. We got 25 more to go. Amen. 
Is that all? 25 years at Gila. He better not. Mary? So uh, Mary's asking us to pray for her brother Leonard. Um, I don't know how much and how I want to say that, but I'll just say we, we should pray for Leonard. You all who, if you were here, you heard what she said. Um, complexities in this life um, as folks get older, and uh, Leonard and his family need our prayers. So if you'll pray for them, I'd appreciate that. Any other requests or praises? Thank you, everyone who was involved in the Spudtacular, indeed. Um, we had a great time. I did. I didn't win bingo one time. <laughs> which I had the, one more, but David took one. <laughs> the nerve of that man. Hilda said she did win one, but David took her prize. So well, you didn't win any either, no, but your husband did. That's right. Well, we if all all of us who were there had a good time, I believe, and thank you, Julie, and everybody else who contributed to that. Linda, did I see your hand, or were you just waving at me? Everett, so 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 Linda's telling stories on her husband while we're offering praises, um, and I suppose that means Linda is just praising God. She that Everett is right there beside her every step of the way. That's the way I'll interpret that. How am I doing, Everett? Um, and I will just say that all the things that Linda just said, Everett won a game of bingo before he ever got here. All right. Thank you, Ellie. So Sarah's the one who's watching anonymously, watching Sarah, and she's praising God that she met her oldest nephew. See, that's tremendous that she's, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, Sarah, when are you coming back? I, I know that she um, was texting me on the drive down or maybe before she left or after she got there, but... That was a really long drive for Sarah, and I know she was anxious about it. And well, regardless of when Sarah comes back, I'd like to ask that you pray for Sarah, that she travel well, and um, uh, that uh, God watch over. She comes back Wednesday. I knew if I asked online that we could get the and she can text. Him. So pray for Sarah. For mercies on Wednesday. All these prayers and requests and praises separate because I've got them all mixed up today. Shall we pray together? Loving God, we are amazed that you count us family, that you have adopted each one of us into the divine family that you have called us and chosen us and loved us before we knew you. And then once we did know you, you loved us in spite of ourselves. God, I thank you for all of these members of my family, May and Sarah and Charlotte and Eddie and Patsy and Mary and Elizabeth and Beth and Tim and Ruth and Philip and Kimberly and Hilda and Linda and Everett and Kelly and Sarah Leonard, Jerry, God, we are humbled by your love and your care for each one of us, that you know the very hairs on our head and that they matter to you. God, bless May and may she know it. 
May she feel your blessing even though she's maybe in pain this minute. God, I thank you for Sarah, for knowing everything about everybody, for being one of my contacts in this congregation who just knows people. Thank you that you allowed her safely to go to Roanoke and visit with her family and meet her oldest nephew. God, bless her and bless her nephew. Bless her brothers. Bless their family. God, bless Charlotte and Eddie. You know every struggle that each one of us face and you know they've got more than their share. God, bless them and keep them. May they know how desperately you love and care for them through my actions and all of our actions as we become your agents of grace to them. God, we don't see Patsy and Mary and Elizabeth Ann very often, as often as we'd like to. We pray that every time that any one of us calls them, speaks to them, writes them, sees them, they will feel a connection to you through Beulah Baptist Church, their church, the church they love, whether they can be here or not. God bless Beth's brother, Tim. Thank you for ministering your healing in his life, in his physical heart. We pray that you would touch his spiritual heart. Bless him and keep him. And bless his sister who loves him dearly. God, be with Philip and Kimberly Kane, who, yes, are a long, long, long way from their home and from their children, while they seek faithfully to serve you and to communicate the gospel to persons where they live. God, thank you for Ruth, Mary's oldest sister, for the good news that she's got a daughter. We pray that you would be with her when she is now hospitalized. God, I praise you for David and Hilda Driggs, for the love they have for one another, for this church, and even on their good days for me. We know how desperately you love them and they love you. And we praise you for the example they are to us in their faithfulness here for all these many years. God, be with Mary's brother Leonard and his family as they make difficult decisions. God, we thank you for inspiring us to fellowship together with Julie and others' leadership for a fun, spectacular event where some of us won bingo and some of us won bingo before we got here and some of us didn't win, but we still had a whole lot of fun. touching us, for inspiring us, for being here with us in, in ways that are beyond our imagination and our wildest dream. God, hear these prayers and all of the prayers of our heart, whether spoken or not, for we all Our hymn is Heavenly Sunlight. Won't you stand and sing with me together?
While you remain standing, I will read our text for the day. It is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. I'll give you just a second to get there if you want to. John 12, 20 through 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told him. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, if falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said, it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he to die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Are we... Ready for this hour. This is not only St. Patrick's Day, it's also the fifth Sunday of Lent. And as I have been saying, Lent is that season of the Christian year when we consider the last 40 days of Jesus' life. When we consider what Jesus was thinking and feeling as he entered Jerusalem the very last time. This is the time in the Christian year when we imagine how what Jesus was thinking and feeling might inform our own spiritual disciplines and our own spiritual journey. Meanwhile, individually and collectively, well, we're facing our own trials. Some trials we know and some trials 
we do not yet know. Are we ready for this hour? No matter how we prepare ourselves, no matter how we prepare our congregation for trials, for challenges, or for change, no matter how we prepare ourselves for the future, surprises occur. For example, no matter how we prepare ourselves for our own illnesses, our bodies fail us. We have members today who are not feeling well enough to be here. I'll not call them again. But if we look around us, we can see who is not here. But if they felt like being here, well, they would be here. Are we? I mean, if I were to ask you why you invest time and energy in Bible study, in your own spiritual growth, in your own spiritual maturity, you might say, well, so I can face the challenges that most surely will befall me. <laughs> or you might say, well, so I can meet the challenges in this life and the next. Those would be good answers. When I was doing high-intensity training a few years back, that means exercising real hard and fast, when I was doing that, my answer was so that I could face the physical challenges of getting older, assuming I would get older, and here I am. We might even say that all of our workouts, whether physical, mental, or spiritual, are about getting ready for our future. At the same time, are we ready for this hour? Might not even be the best question of the best time for the sermon. My other choice was may put a bit of a sharper focus on it, and it's more like, well, what sacrifices are you or are we ready to make? It seems to me that this notion of being ready for our trials and preparing for them. And let me illustrate that with an old story, and you've probably heard this, and I hope it's not one David Driggs told one day when I wasn't here recently. One day... One of the hogs on the farm was arguing with one of the chickens. They were discussing sacrifice and commitment. The two farm animals each thought about their commitment and their purpose in life. First, the chicken cackled out loud, You don't understand. I lay eggs and the farmer takes them from me every single day. The hog just glared at the chicken mud dripping from her jowls. She said, you think I don't understand sacrifice? You lay eggs. The farmer takes them every day. That is a small sacrifice. Do you know what the farmer eats with the eggs? Ham, bacon, sausage. That is no small sacrifice. That, friend, is total commitment. On so many levels, with every moment of Christian preparation, within our Bible studies, preaching, Christian disciplines, prayers, in all of the ways we convey and communicate with God, God is challenging us in one way or another to appreciate that we need to be totally committed and make all the sacrifices necessary. In our text for today, we read about a scene toward the end of Jesus' life. He had entered Jerusalem for the very last time. In fact, we might be confused that the text today precedes Palm Sunday, even though that is when we celebrate Palm Sunday, but he's already done Palm Sunday by the time we get to this text. Seems out of sequence. Nevertheless, here we are looking at Jesus' words, at Jesus' attitude, at Jesus' dedication and his commitment even to us. And we are using this glimpse into Jesus' life to appreciate what God has called us to do, even in a time when we feel challenged by circumstances, even when we feel surprised by how life has unfolded, even though we do not know what is coming next in the future. Are we ready for this hour? Let's set the stage for Jesus' words and then see what conclusions we might draw from. When the text opens, Jesus has already entered Jerusalem, as I said. The people had already shouted their hosannas. They had already laid their cloaks on the ground. They had already laid their 
palm branches, John 12, 16, did not fully understand all of the things they were seeing. And this year we've said that a lot. They didn't understand what they were seeing. John 12, 19 says the Pharisees realized that there was not one thing they could do because the people had gone after Jesus. Then in verse 20, John says that some Greeks, and I'll say presumably these are Greek diaspora Jews who were in town for the festival, meaning they'd come for Passover. They sought out Philip. Notice this disciple has a Greek name, and he's from a Greek town in Israel, Bethsaida. The Greeks sought out this Greek disciple and asked to see Jesus. Philip didn't feel like he could go straight to Jesus. don't know why. He went to Andrew first. And then the two of them went to Jesus. And then in verse 23, we begin to see the heart of our text where it says, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Notice a couple of things. One, Jesus doesn't seem even to acknowledge the inquisitive Greeks because he's got something else more important on his mind. As important as those folks may have been, he had something he wanted to convey. In fact, John never again that I can think of mentions the Greeks who were seeking Jesus. It almost seems that the Greeks uh, referenced here were the catalyst that prompted Jesus to tell his followers exactly what was on his mind. And what was that? The hour has come for the Son of Man. Are we ready for this hour, the Son of Man, to be glorified? What sacrifices are we ready to make? We know that Jesus in just days is just days away from making a sacrifice of total commitment. Are we ready? Let's continue with the text. Verse 24, Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Have you ever noticed that every living thing dies? No exception. Every living thing in this world as we know it dies. Living things have no choice in the matter, whether plant or animal. Every living thing dies. The question is not really whether death will occur. The question is whether life will have meaning. Will a life serve a purpose? That purpose might simply be as a placeholder in the food chain. But everything and everyone will have a purpose. Have you ever known a person whose belief system is challenged to the core every time something out of the ordinary happens? What does this mean? What am I going to do? I'm not speaking of the general shock that we all face. I'm speaking about how to prepare ourselves for life, for death, for crisis, for change. Conversely, Jesus is saying that the way for the smallest grain to have purpose in this universe is that it must die. Then Jesus gets personal. Those who love those who will keep it for eternal life. I believe that with these words, Jesus is challenging us to live a life of substance, to find meaning that is beyond ourselves, our possessions, to find value in the persons in need around us more than in the value we find in what we might have. When Jesus says, those who hate their lives, I don't believe he's referring to persons who are, who are depressed or someone who actually might say, I hate my life. I might be able to imagine a teenager having said that to me once. I believe that when Jesus uses the words, those who hate their lives, he's using those who will keep their lives for eternal life or those who keep the world in his cosmic perspective. Those who align their values with Jesus' values will keep their lives. Those who have Jesus' perspective keep their lives. In other words, the world we see is temporal, it's temporary, it's transient, just like our bodies are. By implication, I think Jesus is telling his audience to value the eternal, the things that will survive even our own deaths, namely the souls of God's children. Then Jesus elaborates. 
Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Verse 27 is a transition verse. Here, Jesus answers our question about how does he feel knowing what is about to occur with him. And Jesus, in this verse, 27, says, My soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? And of course, his, he, the way he says that, he, he answers it, not with implication, but directly, straightforward. No, it is for this very reason that I have come into this hour. Jesus is speaking rhetorically. No, he's not going to pray that God the Father would save him from this hour because Jesus knows his purpose. Do you know your purpose? Do we, viewer, do we know our purpose? If we can't, don't, or refuse to know our purpose, we might be prone to ask the Father to save us from a difficult hour when the future looks uncertain somehow. But when Jesus poses an alternative by means of his own life and his own actions, Jesus has prepared himself for the trials that were surely to befall him. Perhaps we need to do the same. To prepare, as I've been suggesting, for whatever the future gives us. Preparing for physical challenges, preparing for emotional challenges, preparing for spiritual challenges. Verse 28, Father, glorify thy name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. Again, we might want to follow Jesus' playbook. When we face uncertainty, when we face trials, when, we, when the road ahead is unclear, when we're not sure what to do, we can pray, Father, glorify your name. Now, we may not hear a voice from heaven saying, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again, but we can be assured that God will. Verse 29, John says, The crowd standing there heard this thunderous voice and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. The world will not always interpret what they see and hear correctly. Of course, I might say the world will always interpret it wrongly. Jesus then reframed for his audience what had occurred, saying, well, this voice didn't come for my sake. It came for yours. Jesus didn't need to hear God's voice. Jesus had been listening to God's voice, whether it was audible or not. His audience needed to hear the voice. We need to hear the voice in the text. We long for such external validation. In the last week, some of us have been asking ourselves, well, what do we do now? What's this church going to do? How are well, all of those things going to get done? We're passing the list around. Some of you have seen that list. There's a lot on it. There's a Maybe that we will not be able to keep up or we'll have to let things go. Are we has to be yes, in faith. It be time for us to make sacrifices that we hadn't anticipated. Changes in our daily or weekly routine or monthly routines. We may have to make a sacrifice of time. Some of us are going to need to invest a little bit more time or invest time differently in this endeavor we call Beulah. It may be that some of us need to invest a little more money in Beulah. It may be that some of us need to reallocate the energy we invest in Beulah. It might be that some of us end up being a little busier than we prefer in the short term, taking on things that we hadn't anticipated. It might mean that some of us have a slightly more active retirement than we anticipated. All of these sacrifices made in the name of Jesus. Are we ready for this hour? Won't you pray with me? Holy God, we trust in you more than we trust in ourselves. And because of you, we know that we can, we can step up. We can make necessary sacrifices. We can put our commitment to you, to one another, to this church, to this congregation. Are we?
Are we ready for this? Or? Well, God, unless I'm mistaken, I think you may have called us to this hour. And unless I'm mistaken, I can't really imagine anyone here saying, Lord, save me from this hour. one of our lives, calling each one of us in a unique way. Some of us to specialized service, all of us to be your children. Speak to us this day. May we have ears to hear. And may we have the courage to do what you want us to do. This very hour, in this very day, in your name. Amen. This time, every week, we sing a hymn of decision. It's an opportunity for us to, to actively act out our renewed commitment to God, whether that's by professing our faith in Christ, whether that's joining this church, whether that's rededicating our lives to, to Christ. This time when we do that as a, as a tradition in this congregation. So if you make any of those decisions, if you're online, I hope you'll reach out and let us know. If you're here, I hope you'll come down and speak to me. Won't you stand with me and sing together. Come, ye sinners. It's hymn number 323. Please pray with me. We leave this place in the arms of our Savior, blessed by Him beyond measure. May we leave this place to be agents of God's grace with everyone we see. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.